Hi, I'm Joan Cartan Hansen, and welcome to Science Trek The Web Show, and welcome to Craters of the Moon National Monument. As recently as 2,000 years ago, this place was alive with active volcanoes. Joining us are two scientists at Boise State University's Jeff Johnson and Brittany Brand. Thank you both for joining us. It's great to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay, let's go to your questions. My name is Colin and I go to Cynthia Mann Elementary School. And my question is, do volcanoes erupt because of earthquakes? So, volcanoes and earthquakes live side by side. Volcanoes, when they're getting ready to erupt, always produce little earthquakes, sometimes medium-sized earthquakes. And this is a good thing for people who are interested in trying to forecast volcanic eruptions, because a volcano that's becoming restless will start to shake the ground as the rock is broken and the magma is coming towards the surface. Hi, my name is Dennis. I go to AJ Winters Elementary. And my question is, what causes a volcano to erupt? A volcano will erupt when molten magma makes its way to the surface. Now, magma is what we call molten rock when it's inside the ground, and lava is what we call it when it erupts outside of the volcano or onto the ground. Magma is, is liquid and it's moving up through rock, which means it's less dense. This liquid magma is less dense than the surrounding rock. When you have something that's less dense than what's around it, it's going to rise towards the surface, kind of like a hot air balloon rising through cold air. In the case of magma, when it makes its way to the surface, it's going to start to push on, push on the crust, and the pressure inside of that magma body will eventually exceed the pressure of the rock holding it in and break through to erupt at a volcano. It's kind of like filling up a water balloon a little bit too full and the water balloon bursting. Same kind of process with magma erupting onto the surface as lava. Hi, my name is Quinn and I go to Gateway Elementary. I was just wondering what are the key reasons why some volcanoes strongly affect global climate and some don't? So there, there are two ingredients that are necessary for a volcano and its eruption to affect climate globally. First of all, you need a big eruption. You need to send material up into the stratosphere, which is more than six miles above sea level. Secondly, you need to erupt sulfur gas in large quantities so that that sulfur gas reacts with the atmosphere and creates sulfate particles, which effectively block sunlight from reaching the Earth. Hi, my name is Courtney and I go to Cynthia Main Elementary School. And my question is, how long does it take until lava turns into rock? Well, it really depends. One thing to keep in mind is that when lava erupts onto the surface, it's so hot that just interacting with the cool air around it, the surface will cool very quickly, maybe within minutes. It'll form a crust that's solid enough that you could actually walk on it. But it might melt your boots because there's still a lot of molten stuff just underneath that crust, which is going to take longer to cool. So lava flows in Hawaii, for example, the crust will cool very quickly within minutes of flowing across the surface, but the center molten part can be molten for quite a bit longer. In another case, sometimes volcanoes can generate lava lakes, and this is where lava will actually erupt out of a vent and fill in the crater of a volcano. In this case, if the volcano is shut off and the lava is shut off, the center of that lava lake will take a very long time to cool. So a good example of this is the Kilauea Iki eruption in Hawaii, which was just a flank vent from Kilauea. In this eruption, there was a lava lake that was 150 feet thick. The crust cooled immediately. There were, there were volcanologists walking across it and drilling down to tap the, into the lava and get samples. It took more than 30 years for that lava inside Kilauea's lava lake to cool. My name is Elsa and I go to Longfellow Elementary and my question is what is the biggest eruption ever recorded? One of the biggest historical eruptions that has occurred during um, you know, recent times has been the eruption of Tambora Volcano in Indonesia which erupted in 1815 and released 165 cubic kilometers of magma. How much is that? Well, that was about 160 times the size of Mount St. Helens eruption. 
This erupted in 1815 and it caused lots of loss of life. It changed the climate of the planet and it generated or produced a giant hole in the ground called a caldera. Hi, my name is Tony and I go to White Pine Elementary and my question is, which volcano is most dangerous? The cinder cone, composite volcano, or a shield volcano? What makes a volcano dangerous isn't necessarily the type of volcano it is, or whether or not it's going to have a lava flow eruption or an explosive eruption that forms ash. What makes a volcano dangerous is when there are people living in the path of potential volcanic hazards. So for example, the most dangerous volcano in the United States is Mount Rainier. And that's because there are hundreds of thousands of people living along the flanks and downstream from Mount Rainier. Another very dangerous volcano worldwide is Mount Vesuvius in Italy. Mount Vesuvius is famous for its 79 AD eruption, which took out the towns of Herculaneum and Pompeii. There are currently more than 500,000 people living in that zone. So those are clearly very dangerous, these, these strata volcanoes that are famous for producing very explosive eruptions where ash can not only go up into the sky, but can collapse back down to form these ground-hugging clouds of ash, gas, and rock that bury landscapes. But a shield volcano or a cinder cone could be equally as dangerous if there are people in the path of the lava. So really, it depends on whether, not, not whether or not a volcano is going to erupt, but whether or not there are people living in a zone that overlaps with the volcanic hazards when the volcano erupts. I'm sorry we've run out of time. My thanks to Jeff and Brittany for answering questions. Thank you for having us. Yeah, and thanks for the great questions. And thanks too to the folks at Boise State University and the folks here at Craters of the Moon National Monument for hosting us. If you want to learn more, check out the volcanoes area on the Science Trek website. You'll find facts, links, games, our Volcanoes broadcast show, and lots more. And every week, check out my blog for the latest science news for kids, all at idahoptv.org. Thanks for joining us for Science Trek, the web show. <laughs>